alone and do not reflect the views of the creators, hosts, or that of Cryer Media or their partners. <laughs> the show may cover sensitive topics and information and discuss triggering issues. Listener discretion is advised. God, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing says trouble's coming like a big old disclaimer. <laughs> Hi, friends. Welcome to the program. My name is Dean. Uh, full boat today. Oh, what a Tuesday. Jeez, what a Tuesday. It's such a Tuesday. It's a Wednesday. I'm Dean. Uh, joining me as always, uh, my friend, compadre, and uh, co host, and uh, I, a newly employed, Cryer Media employee. Please welcome, or actually not an employee, he's an intern, uh, Locke Lacrosse, 95. No, not there anymore. He's just at home. <laughs> Admit it. You love the autonomous work life. Just admit it. Admit it. You love being a small business owner. Admit it. I, I had a moment yesterday after I talked to um, somebody that I used to work with where I, uh, I was relieved by my current situation. Where they start telling you about their day and you're like, uh, uh, I'm working for somebody else. That thing. Mm -hmm. Is that it? Yeah, no, that's what yeah. I figured. Yeah, but then I got on the phone with my lawyer and I uh, had a had a uh, who charges me quite a bit of money. Yeah, per hour. Yeah, yeah. and and then we had a a conversation. Yeah. So, what, what are you going to finish that there's sentence? There's pros or no? and cons. There's pros and cons to this. You know, self, self employment thing. Yeah. 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 Well, like, and the con is. That you might not make it if you don't have the nuts to do it. The pros are, if you show up, it. chances are you're going to be just fine. You're showing up, you're being just fine. But you don't have any of the stress. It's just nice to see. Like last night, I'm like, hey, Locke, we got a bunch of work to do. Can you do these two things? And you're like, yeah, no problem. I got it. Five minutes later, you send me a text. Let me just read it, actually. <clears throat> Let me just read this, what you sent to me. I love it. I love that I work with you. I really do. I was going to grab that micro content tonight. Five minutes later, no, nah, I'm not. I'm tapped. Ten minutes later, also, I'm drunk. <laughs> All that's true. I sat down to start to edit. I know how edit, it works. I know how and it works. I realized I was four deep and that it probably wouldn't be the best time for me to try to edit content. No. No, it's not. Self-awareness. So Self-awareness. Um, Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, as luck would have it, though, we surround ourselves with pros, right? And some of us get into this business and we get to know people who are also professional. You're a professional broadcaster. And pros recognize pros. Sometimes people that have game recognize other people that have game they might not agree with. And we live in this kind of weird, cantankerous society where, you know, we like to label people a certain thing. Uh-huh. You know, the culture wars that we're going through, it's really, you know, woke versus whatever the other thing is. Woke versus yeah. right, progressive or unwoke versus what, whatever. What, whatever and, label you want to put on it. Yeah, and you've got different interests to feed into it, right? Everybody's, you know, you're, I'm progressive, I'm this. And the one thing I can't stand are those morons that put um, proud left-leaning whatever in their bio. I'm like, are you fucking mm -hmm. serious? Or, or proud liberal or proud conservative or proud this. Like those guys, the performance people, right? Real game identifies real game in this business. A mm -hmm. couple of months ago, I had an opportunity to interview David Parker from Take Back Alberta. Now, one of the more enigmatic, influential political leaders in this country. Mm -hmm. As we all know, deeply involved in the UCP party in your province, right? He mm -hmm. is uh, really the backbone. And, and he'll take issue with this with me in the podcast. He's standing by. We're going to chat with him in just a second. We have an announcement to make about these conversations. And uh, through that process, I got to know the man, David Parker. And then we started having these conversations where I'm like, you know, there's a lot of things that people don't know about me. There's a lot of things people don't know about you. And we only see the worst parts of each other or the most extreme parts of each other. And, and to a lot of people, social media, political rhetoric, the environment we live in, it is a game. And you plot and you're strategic and you do these things. David and I are very similar that way. Now, we also vehemently disagree with each other's ideologies. 
and mm. how we go about doing things. Um, but we respect each other on a couple of different levels. There's some common ground here. Yeah, there is. Um, and, you know, through that process of getting to know David, I started other conversations with people who, you know, we spent the last three, four years calling each other names on social media, telling everybody reputationally, you should never have anything to do with that person. This is what they're all about. People have done it to me. Like how many times have you been called a commie fascist libtard uh, on, on the radio? Just from yeah. a comment. And someone's like, well, I know you. You're a commie fascist. No, and it swings. It swings depending yeah, it on, on where you are. Every, yeah. You and I have had numerous conversations in the last little while about this, about how perspective sure. and where you come from can can sort of fuel and, and provide some sort of a narrative for you. And yeah. then... It, my comment to people that 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 bring you up or this podcast or whatever, I'm like, yeah, what you think you know about Dean might be wrong. Have a listen. Yeah, and I think you can say something similarly about the guest you're about to introduce. Yeah, uh, I think you can. I mean, you know, you don't have to seat. agree with them. Nope. But maybe there is some. You know what? There might be a. I like what you said about the end game. Listen, we we don't I, ideologically. Ide, I, ideologically. You got it. Yes, yeah. we're not on the same page, but ultimately what we're working towards is a similar end game. Yeah. We're Engagement. Just sort of, yeah, First we're principles. Paths. Absolutely we are. So we've got an announcement to make. And before we make the announcement, let's uh, bring the man in. Please welcome to the program uh, the director of Take Back Alberta and a friend of mine, Mr. David Parker, ladies and gentlemen. Parker, where is that boy? Hey, how's everybody doing? This is, I guess, number three. Number three. I was. We had the little Max Fawcett debate, and then we had uh, our our quite popular, it seems, uh, discussion about the uh, Conservative Party of Canada and the corruption yep. that's there. And uh, and here I am again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, one of the only guys I know that doesn't mind eating his own if his owner doing bad things. It's what I well, dig about David Parker. You know, right? the homeschooler in me, right? I just, I, I, I've never liked being told what to do by anyone or what tribe I have to be a part of. So, yeah, well, and that's the, that's the thing, right? Like when I told uh, Locke you were coming on, um, it was amazing because I had to like go back and, and say to people, Hey, listen, I'm going to have David Parker on the podcast. This is like the first time we had you on with Fawcett. It was great. It was a good podcast. Got to know each other. Then we did another podcast about corruption in the Conservative Party, which we will address in a few other uh, meetings that we have, which we are going to broadcast. And through that process, you get to know a guy, right? And and it's interesting because, you know, I think you probably had an idea of who I was. I had an idea who you were. But all those ideas were curated by other people, David. Well, right? it's also interesting, right, is... Uh as you said earlier, we may not agree on everything ideologically, but it's interesting that you are getting death threats. I think you said you got 1,400 death threats yeah. from people on, let's call it my side of the ideological aisle. Meanwhile, I'm getting death threats and having my brake lines cut from people on your side of the ideological aisle. And I think when that's happening, when we're experiencing people threatening violence to try to silence an idea, then we know we got a problem in society. And I think that was a big part of, of what we've been talking about a lot is mm -hmm. when did it get to the point where we couldn't talk to each other anymore? And not only that we couldn't talk to one another, we weren't allowed to talk to one another. I know yeah. a lot yeah. of people, a lot of people have asked me, why are you talking to Dean? He's, he's the worst. Right. And I'm like, well, actually having talked to him, he's, he's really Fair not point. the worst. He's, 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 <laughs> he's, you know, he's close to the worst, but he's not the worst. Like, he, you know, <laughs> and I'm sure Dean that you have many people in your circles who are like, how can you be platforming this evil, evil man? Right. Yeah. And, and the truth is in Lachlan, I mean, I haven't met you until today, but I'm sure you've heard stories about me and and Dean, and it's it's funny yeah. because they're just caricatures. There, there's no reality to them. There's no depth to them. It's it's a label, and then you use the label to discredit someone. Yeah, and I know Dean. A lot of you times, what ends up really. happening? Sorry, yeah, hang I, on. I let me. Let, you go ahead happens. and hang on, David. You finish that thought. You said something, all, and then we'll get. All to I was going to say is, Dean, you were canceled a long time ago. So, like, what I like to say to people is, once you've been canceled, what are they going to do now? What are they, what are they going to say about us that, that they haven't already said? Like they, they can't do anything to me that I'm worried about. I mean, they could try to do violence, but like, you know, I'll make them bleed on the way out. 
<laughs> if, if that's how it's going to go, right? I'll, I'll make them bleed. But uh, but the truth of the matter is most people are too cowardly to actually do violence. And they mm -hmm. just like to, you know, keyboard warrior, like all those people who threatened your life. Was there ever an attempt on your life? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Uh, yeah, 1,400 exactly. death threats. I don't know what your number is. Locke doesn't have any, so he can't even play in this death threat game. I've had, I think you've you got to be over 1,000. You had, you've had some death threats too? Oh, yeah. yeah. I yeah. love this world. Yeah, no, yeah, but but yeah. that's that's the but, point. Sorry, Locke, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, my my point about the about the about the cancel the cancel I canceling people and and things like that is, uh, you know what? The one thing that I've always done is, I've watched this happen to people, and I've seen how people respond to it, and it's interesting because the ones that respond to it where they actually take it seriously, the cancelization and everything like that, and the threats where they go, all right, that's this is something. It becomes what the people that are making the threats want it to become. Mm. I've never let any of that stuff impact me. And, and, and again, it does, but I always put out the perception, listen, say whatever you want. Cancel me. I'm not cancelable. You can't cancel me. I've already made that decision myself. And I, I see that in both of you as well. When, you know, when Dean, there was a serious threat on Dean's life and it, and it tied into threats somebody was making in his name, which led the police to his home. And then they spent a week or two watching his front door. And I remember when Dean and when Dean was going through that, we were talking about it and I, and it was, I was impressed with how he handled it because he removed the threat from any sort of feeling like personal feeling he's, he had about it. Right. And he dis detached himself from it. Now I know that, that's, when his, he, that's his stoicism, right? That's yes. the, that's his philosophy at work. And it's cool when people claim a philosophy and then you see it in practice, which it sounds like you did. Mm. Well, I, I couldn't control it, right? I mean, you and I talk about this all the time. And again, we connect in this in this capacity, right? Where we connect on common sense, the philosophy of life, where you come at things. And we're going to figure these things out together because I want to know where you come from. You want to know where I come from. We want to know how people arrive at their ideological advancements. Where are you with philosophy? Why do you feel the way you feel about certain things? Because that's where people get us and get you and get me, right? Is like, you know, it doesn't matter what you say. You can turn anything into a pejorative. Anybody can you know, we have turned the word, and we said this in the podcast with you last time, and Locke, this is something you and I have talked about. You can legitimately turn left, the word left, and the word right into damaging statements now. We have mm -hmm. done that to each other. Now, when I think of David Parker, and, and I think of what you've been through or what I go through, we do bring it on ourselves, right? We go looking for this. It's not like... It's yeah, not I like, bring oh, it yeah. Up oh, yeah. oh yeah oh yeah oh <laughs> yeah yeah we, we we like i mean uh, the way i describe it is sometimes i like to take a bass or a baseball bat to a hornet's nest and walk away and you know <laughs> sometimes yeah. it gets stung it's just true right but that's yeah. just the nature of these things it's the nature of the things because we feel passionate about certain things but sometimes you know there's a performative of nature and you and i talk a lot about the twitter game david and lachlan and oh, i do yeah. too this is this is the Thunderdome. It is not real life. Those are not real people. That's a place where you get to go and hang something on somebody. You get to give someone a scarlet letter. And we are very, I am very interested in those scarlet letters at this point because, you know, as in as much as, and we'll get to those issues that define each side, but are we getting to the issues that define each side by how that person has come to that ideological place mm. through a series of experiences? Like, what makes David Parker tick? What makes Dean Blundell tick? You know, I watched Jordan Peterson, this clip of him this morning, talking to this guy named The Manlet. No idea who the dude is. And they're talking about, you know, vaccines and big pharma. And I think Jordan Peterson's nuts. But I want to I find out how he got to that perspective where he feels so passionate about something that he's willing Benzos. to be hated by it. Yeah, that might be part of it. He's willing to be hated by it. Same thing with you. Same thing with me. We're very passionate about what we think is right for ourselves. And we're willing to extend that to other people, David. Why are we using it to weaponize against each other? That's the concern. Well, I don't, that I I have. don't even know if, if we are right in a sense. I think, uh, I think 
what's actually happening is something very old. It's a, it's an old strategy. Sun Tzu was one of the first to coin it, but it's divide and conquer, right? It's if, if you and I are fighting one another, we're not going to pay attention to all the corruption that is taking over our system and enriching the few. And it's funny because, you know, I've had capitalist friends say that I'm, you know, a communist because I don't think that the state should be filling people's pockets. But the truth of the matter is the only rich people I like are the people who built it themselves. If you're getting rich off taxpayers money, you're a bad person, plain and simple, because <laughs> you're corrupt. That's just that's how it works. And I know. think I, I believe the state needs to be reduced heavily in size. But but the people, let's call them the elites, whatever you want to call them, the people running the show at this point, whether they're conservative or liberal, are doing it to enrich themselves. Mm -hmm. They're not doing it for the good of the people. And most people are walking off a cliff when it comes to things like inflation. I could go into all of the different things that our governments are doing to destroy us. But healthcare, inflation, affordability, yeah, all of it. Yeah. Whatever. I mean, I am all for immigration. I love the many immigrant friends that I have, whether they're Muslim, whether they're Christian, whether they're Jew, whether they're atheist. There's so many immigrants, and that's what made Canada great. But we're bringing in 10 times more immigrants than we're building housing. That's impoverishing our people. So, like, these are the discussions that we need to be able to have that a lot of people won't let us have. Because as because soon as I say you're racist, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. I'm a racist because I don't want to bring in more people than we build houses. Well, mm -hmm. no, actually, I just I'm against impoverishing the people that live here because our job is to focus on the people who live here. That's that's the job of a society is to take care of one another through politics. And we're not doing that. In fact, we're impoverishing everybody yeah. and nobody my age could buy a house anymore. Like maybe if you're like a, a huge influencer on like you know, and you've made your yourself a business of your own, you might have an opportunity to buy a house. Sure. But like if you have a job, if you have an average job in Canada, you can't buy a house anymore. I saw a stat the other day that said it would take something like 30 years mm. to save up a down payment for a house in Toronto right now. Mm -hmm. 30 years. Yeah. And, and do you remember? It's funny because I was talking to my dad and he's like, hey, dude, I remember growing up. My dad was he was talking about how his dad was like a in, worked at a manufacturing plant. Mom worked at Sears and they lived in a middle class home. They had like an acre and a half in the middle of Edmonton, Alberta. You know, they they had um, they had everything they wanted. They had cars. Cupboards were full of food. Christmas yeah. was incredible. Now, fast forward to 2024. And this is where we align. 2024. You have uh, political parties hoovering money in the form of donations to try to curate the idea that it's the other guy's fault when they're both to blame because they're both corrupt and politics has never, ever, ever, ever been about helping the fucking people. It has never. always been about making it look like you're helping the people and then taking from the people taking their vote, taking their money, taking their minds. And I have never seen it worse than it is today. And so when we talk corruption and David's on the show the last time and we're undressing Pierre Polyev and some stuff is coming and we're undressing conservatives, the significance of that for me, and we're going to make this announcement now of wanting to talk to a guy like David Parker is he is committing the unthinkable in his own party by going after people that are involved in, 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 in that corruption. circle of success, in that ideology, in a broader sense with those parties, UCP conservative party, and he didn't give a shit. And I'm like, hmm, that's a guy that I can work with. Therefore, because of the culture shit, because people tell us we're not allowed to talk to each other and we're both absolutely indignant human beings. <laughs> yeah, we we don't like being told what we can't do, I think no. is a big, big part of it. A big part. Yeah, of it it's sure. a huge part of it because we both have had similar experiences, no matter what we stood for. People threatening our lives, people cutting his brake lines, people following us around, people threatening our families, people threatening our significant others and their employment, people threatening our lives from political institutions. And we're going to get to all of those things, sirs and madams. In a six-part series called Head On, David Parker and myself are going to bring a group of people in 
It's going to be us. It'll be shot on television. It'll be professional grade, all 5K. It'll be scripted. We're going to record a series of interviews, six-part series podcast called Head On, where we bring culture leaders from both sides to have these conversations. Is, to David's point, immigration, as an example, you cannot talk about the monetary damage in this country, the lack of foresight in this country when it comes to the expediency of immig immigration and the money that Canada makes because it is an industry and how we're impoverished because rent is incredible and no one can save to afford to buy a home. But you can't mention that, mm -hmm. even though you didn't mention the color of any immigrant skin. You can't mention that because a whole bunch of losers on the far left will go, oh, you hate your racist. Racist. Well, and and I think it gets it gets even worse than that because what we've created as a society is just a black and white world, a world in which one side is good and one side is evil. And I will take responsibility for playing my role in that because that rhetoric can be fun. And I know you probably would take responsibility for playing a role in that as well. But I think what we're I'm both great know, at it. <laughs> Exactly. We're both great at it. Real good. But the thing yeah. the thing is we need to we need to be able to realize the gravity of the situation we face. Mm -hmm. Right? And and I think for to take a serious note on this. The reason that these conversations are important and the reason I've agreed to do this with you, not just because I like you and enjoy talking to you, is because I think this is actually what Canada needs. Mm. We need to be able to have serious conversations about serious topics and stop allowing our politicians to uh, to create emotions through slogans. Mm -hmm. uh, that that's that's what's been happening. Is it it has become all about how people feel, whether it's you know F Trudeau or it's you know Pierre F Paul P -P. or PP or you know little PP whatever you want to call. Let's go, Jeff. <laughs> And Lachlan, I say, I think you wanted to jump in here, right? Well, I, I listen. This is I, I'm literally losing my mind here. Like, I want to jump out of the screen and and and. Well, first off, I want to strangle Dean. Uh, I have been having conversations like this for a long time, and quite often will get shut down when I bring up things like we've been talking about this is here. My today. idea. I love you, Dean. Years. I love. I love. I do love. But. I mentioned, I mentioned this years ago. Never heard it. That this is where we needed to go because once. I thought. That, <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> this is gonna be the second day in a row I've threatened violence on Dean, and I, and I love you. I love you, you Dean. But, violence but, on YouTube. <laughs> can't do it. I, I know. Okay, so here, here's here's the thing though that I think needs to happen. I think both. Both sides, and I, and I hate even bringing the side thing up. The one thing that I struggle with, um, and and this is sort of my path, is the lack of self awareness uh, that that people on either side or whatever position that they they hold have about their views. Right, that they're missing the hypocrisy of what they're saying, and so that's one thing that I I'd like to highlight and get both your thoughts on it from the perspective of do you see your own hypocrisy at times and are you ignoring it just because you're standing in front of the hornet's test with a bat and you're trying to do something just to piss people off or like, and we'll start with Dean. Do you realize your hypocrisy at times when you say certain oh, things? Oh, I think you're stupid if you don't. I think everybody is, you know, in a moment we get emotional. We say things, we talk uh, about the human journey of what was true yesterday and it might not be true today. And, and, and I get that. I get that from a lot of people. I get that from myself. Generally speaking, we only know what we know in the moment, right? And what we know in the moment when the pandemic started is, it was the great sluicing event of our lifetime. It was like, oh my God, we, you know, the political institutions in this country are going to use this for their benefit, which they are, which they mm -hmm. continue to do. And I was under the impression back then, and we grow a lot in four years. I got to take a side. Like I was, I, I thought, because they convinced me that you have to take a side. And if you didn't take yeah. a progressive side, which lined up with a lot of my values at the time, progressive values at the time, but they didn't line up with how I felt about real life situations, right? Like case in point, we're talking about 
uh, the way people talk or we're talking about, you know, someone calling you a libtard because you happen to think we're too hot with immigration. We're killing vacancy rates and real estate sucks and we cannot have people who live in this country, whether they're coming here today or they've been here for 10 years, not being housed. Right. So let's like, it makes no sense. And then, and then someone's like, Oh yeah, you're a racist. And you're like, Oh my God, you can't win in this argument. So I cared too much for about two and a half, three years. I don't give a, I think everybody I don't give did. a shit anymore. I don't care what anybody thinks about me talking to Mr. Parker. I don't care what anybody thinks about what I thought about vaccines two, three years ago, or what I thought about what mask wearing or what I thought about herd immunity two, three years ago. That evolves, that changes. I don't give a shit if anybody's vaccinated anymore. It's your sickness, not mine. Like I say that to my kids about their homework, where my son came home today for lunch. He's talking about how great he did on a test. And his buddy's like, do you make him study? I'm like, no, because it's none of my fucking business whether or not he passes business education or not. It's his, right? That's his stuff. And so admittedly, during the pandemic, I'm like, everybody needs to get vaccinated. Everybody, I don't care anymore because I'm too tired. I want to have these conversations with people like, okay, how did we all get there? Right. Well, let, let's 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 talk about that for a moment because I think that's super important. I want you to answer that question, David. Do you realize your own hypocrisy in some of these situations, some of these comments, whether it's on Twitter, whether you're in a room full of people that might, you know, where there's two guys that disagree with you? Do you see the things that people might be able to point out as hypocrisy from what you're bringing to the table? Oh, absolutely. There's there's no question. Uh, an example would be a lot of people in uh, in my movement uh, are pro life. Right. And a lot of people hate that. Right. They're like, oh, you hate women. But also so they're saying, oh, like women shouldn't be allowed to have abortions on the same side. They're saying we want medical choice over our bodies. Like there's definitely a, a tension there. There's an, a, a, we could even call it a hypocrisy there. And I recognize that. I think if you don't recognize the let's call it the paradoxes in your own belief system, then you're not a, a self-aware person. Yeah. But I think also if, look, if ideology is what runs your life, then you're you're not an, a self-aware person, mm -hmm. right? So as much as Dean has ideological beliefs, let's call them progressive for lack of a better word. And as, as and I have ideological beliefs, let's call them conservative. My ideology is not who I am, Correct. right? Who I, who I am is someone who likes to think very deeply about complex issues, someone who likes to encourage people to take responsibility for their own lives and to use that responsibility, like both Dean and I have, to make our lives better. Like I took responsibility for my alcoholism and my life is infinitely better than it was when I was an alcoholic. That's just a fact about me, right? And I, I think Dean and I have talked about this. I think he would feel the same way. That's what I want to encourage people to. But here's the thing. I can encourage people to take responsibility for things and then not always take responsibility for the things that I should. Right. And, and that's a process, but, but to pretend like, because you aren't perfect, you have nothing to say because there's, like you said, hypocrisy in your words and your actions. That's, that's just to be anti-human. There's no perfect people. No, I'm not. I'm not saying that you sh you shouldn't say anything, David, because of the hypocrisy. I'm just I'm 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 trying to gauge a sense of your self awareness when it does what it does happen. Uh, and now, just hearing you say what you said in the last two minutes is because I knew why Dean wanted you on the network, and I knew why he was going to do this with you. You just solidified it 100% right there in that two minutes. Self-aware. Um, no. Right. Like the, yeah. there's the and game that's, part. We That's kind of where we, yeah, we there's, are. There's the game right. part. And, and, and the funny thing. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. No, no, please go ahead. Go ahead. I'll get I was just going to say like Twitter's also like Dean's totally right. Like I view Twitter as the Thunderdome. It's where you go and you like you beat the crap out of people in a in a rhetorical way because that's. That's the form of communication that exists in our society. But I think what Dean and I, with launching this uh, series and hopefully a long-term project together, the purpose of it is simple. And that's, yeah, the Thunderdome exists. And Dean and I are both like well-known warriors of the Thunderdome. Like, shit disturbers. We're shit disturbers, right? Like, yeah. like I tweet certain things and I guarantee you 10 newspapers will write about it across the country. Like yeah. it's just, 
They love writing about David Parker because you know what they won't do is they won't like it or retweet it because they don't no, want no. any record of interacting with you because it looks <laughs> bad on them, right? They're like, oh, oh they might get canceled. I mean, I had recently everybody on my friends list on Facebook was contacted by a conservative organizer telling them to unfriend me because I was hurting the movement. Every single one of my mm. friends, right? And that's that's cancel culture is not just a left wing thing. Yeah. Cancel culture has infiltrated the no. right. Um, and the reason that I'm here isn't because I don't like pissing off people that I disagree with. I actually probably enjoy it too much. But the reason I, <laughs> I just, you know, like people think that making fun of me hurts me on Twitter. And I just laugh and th I'm like, thank you for the attention. Like that's, that's the currency mm. that I, that I work in is attention. And, um, but the reason I'm here is because I met a guy that I don't agree with on very much on the surface that I agree with almost everything underneath, right? Like how do you take responsibility for your own life? How do you let, let's, let's, let's dig into that a little bit. Just, okay. So by the way, he's talking about me. You, you, <laughs> yeah. I know he's talking about you. I, I realize that, uh, but I want, I, I want to, I, I want to see if we can um, turn the soil on that one a little bit, just, just from the perspective of, Nice analogy. Where we're in the soil. Right I like now. that. Good one. I, that's a good analogy. Yeah. Really agriculture as, related. As a society, Let's get the seeds into the ground and get I, them growing here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. L listen, David. As a society, and I can't remember if this was something that you had mentioned before we jumped on and started um, the, the the podcast, or if it's something that we were talking about before we jumped on. But you had mentioned that that what you and Dean plan on doing is absolutely what we need as a society. And you mentioned Canada. Canada really really needs this. Can you expand on that? Yeah, yeah. Um and maybe Dean you have a, you have an input into that as yeah, well. Yeah, let David go first. It's why good. is it that we need this conversation right now? What why is it so important that a guy that represents a progressive liberal leaning side of 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 a philosophy and ideology and and a guy that's on the right, a conservative why do we need you two a-holes to get into a room and have a conversation? What is it about that conversation that's going to make life better for us in Canada? Okay, well, here's what I really think it comes down to. Who benefits from people like Dean and I hating each other? Do we benefit? Well, maybe people like Dean and I benefit a little bit because we could smack each other around on Twitter and you know get more attention and, and use that to further whatever uh, projects we're working on. But in general, when there's division all that all that does and the british empire were the experts at this they were the best in the business they may still be i mean they ruled india by dividing various different groups against one another and making them hate each other and fight one another and so they could just you know they hated each other so much that they were fighting all the time and meanwhile the british were in charge mm -hmm. and this is an old tactic it's it's not a a race-based tactic. It's just a tactic that's used by the powerful to maintain their power. And here's the truth. Nobody is what you ideologically think they are, right? Like if you truly believe that all left-wing progressive people are evil, then you're an idiot. And even if you believe that most progressive left-wing people are evil, you're an idiot. Now, with that said, I do believe there are elements of an ideology that has seeped into our society that is evil. But that doesn't mean the people that believe it are believing it for evil reasons. Mm -hmm. Similarly, for myself, just because you think that uh, because I oppose certain ideas and don't want those ideas propagated, that I'm evil, that the reason I'm doing it is out of hate, that's stupid. Mm -hmm. uh, people like people who live purely on hate have horrible lives. They they just live unhappy, grumpy, miserable existences. Mm -hmm. I know that Dean's heart is not full of hate, despite you know some of the things he may have said online that pissed off people in the freedom movement and the convoy. And like I think Dean calling them hillbillies, uh, yeah, well, to... whatever. I call them names. I mean, like we we call people names sometimes, yeah, right? But and and this is this draws me to Parker, like watching him go after people and call people sir, and the one specifically things you've had to apologize for. I'm like, <laughs> I don't know if I didn't apologize. Okay. I want to be clear. I wasn't apologizing for the truths that I spoke. I was apologizing for making it about people instead of ideas. And, and, right. but, 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 but the, uh, but the point here is 
Dean is a person, not an ideology. And I'm a person, not an ideology. And people, I heard it said once, once you get to know someone, it's generally pretty hard to hate them. Yeah. And mm. what's happened in our society is we're not getting to know one another anymore. And therefore, we're just being divided more and more. And that's what identity politics is. That's what this idea of the most important thing about you is some characteristic that you can't even control, like your race, like your sexuality. Like, I think you can control your religion a lot more than that. But let's say race and sexuality. We're dividing people on those lines. Those are not the most interesting things about a person. Mm. They're not the thing that mo I'm most interested in about Dean. I don't think they're the most thing interesting thing that Dean is interested in about me. And I and I have friends that don't agree with me ideologically, but we're friends because I like the person. Mm. And I think that we've lost that. I mean, you see all the polling. People yeah. don't even want and the states is even worse. But we're we're just ten years behind here in Canada. Mm. But in the states. People don't even want their children dating someone with different political views. How pathetic is that? That we're defining ourselves by our political views. I think the reason, and sorry that I'm a little long winded here, but the reason that this particular podcast is so needed is we need to start talking to one another again and realize that the propaganda being used to divide us is bullshit. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I completely agree. Hey, do you want to add to that? You yeah, no, I, I do. very well done. I'll just tie a little personal bow on it. Um, he's right about one thing. It's super easy to be hateful uh, from your couch with your thumbs, right? Put that person on your couch, give them a coffee and sit next to them. Uh, it's impossible. We don't do that in real life. So David yeah. and I have we've literally shit posted each other. Uh, we've had our organizations and our groups and armies fighting. We've had people go after each other. Then we spoke face to face, face to face. And my hands are sweaty. I don't know about his. And we're like, okay, what do we expect? And then I'm like, I like the guy. He's an alcoholic like me. He's human like me. He's learning like me. He apologizes when he goes wrong like me. He stands for things I don't like. I stand for things he don't like. But we don't know what those things are, how we got there. We don't know how he arrived at this place. And there's empathy in human stories, right? There's empathy in conversations that we have with people. Like, I want to talk to Danielle Smith. I want to put Jordan Peterson on a podcast. This isn't platforming. This is, hey, listen, you are you. You represent what you represent. Why? How? Not, I'm going to send out a tweet saying Jordan Peterson exudes little dick energy, which I did, which is why he blocked me. <laughs> After he shit posted me, but um, I watched a couple clips about with Jordan Peterson a couple days ago, and I'm like, okay, in that moment he was human, right? And I don't understand the other stuff, but I want to know about the other stuff. Why do you do that? And I and and I think people like David, and I think people like us, we've looked at, and I'll be honest, I've looked at this Thunderdome or this this game as a game for a reason, right? It hasn't, it, and it's been altruistic. It hasn't been duplicitous, but there are reasons when digital content is your business. And you know this, David, right? You want to be able to put something out in the atmosphere. You're going to charge people up. The algorithm is going to take it. We know what we're doing. We're not stupid people. And then we contact other people in DMs. We're like, can you put this out? Send that to that group. Like there is a game to play here. We want to put those, yeah. that game, we want to put all that stuff aside. And we want to put all the algorithms aside. And we want to get back to like 1978 where, you know, you could literally go yeah. into someone's house who thought the earth was flat and say, hey, buddy, great to see you, even though you're a flat earther, because I don't care about that stuff. I don't like Mad Mike Hughes. You had him on the radio for like years, right, Locke? Flat earther. Yeah, two and a half years. Dude, we had him on. Like you couldn't do that during Loved the him. pandemic because there's this expectation out there that you're going to lose. You're going to lose listeners, armies. David and I don't care. You don't care about losing support from people that we can't control anymore. So the time is perfect for people to have these conversations. And in those conversations, we'll be able to understand each other. A little bit. And, and if we don't, if we don't have these conversations, then we're just going to, it just builds up to the point where Rwanda happens. Mm -hmm. It just builds up until violence is yeah. the only option. And look, we're seeing that happen in the States right now. And like, you guys might not like Trump. I might not like Biden, whatever. It's going to end in violence if the rhetoric keeps going the way that it is. Mm -hmm. Because that's all it is. 
said the other day that it's going to end in in a bloodbath well, if he doesn't see, win. And, and, and that's you know that's propaganda too. He said that there was going to be a bloodbath in the auto industry. The media clipped it, right, and said he's saying there's going to be a bloodbath. And like this is the stories, right? These are these are the ways that that the media and the elites are dividing us and making us have opinions, and more importantly than opinions, feelings. Mm. feelings about other people and the feeling that they're making us all feel, whether it's on my side or your side is disgust. They're Would trying say, to make, can us I ask you a question, David? Would you say in a, in an, in an honest moment, and we know the game, we know the Thunderdome. Would you say, and you're good at eliciting feeling. I can tell you that I'm good at eliciting feeling. We know what we're doing when we do that. Um, do you think during this process, you know, because this is kind of what I hope for. You and I talked about it privately. Maybe during this process of these conversations, we arrive at more of a middle where the round edges, the sharp edges kind of smoothed out, that we can help each other understand life and maybe come into the into the middle a little bit more. Talking about what's important to that person. How did you arrive at that? Because I've only become better if I have expanded my horizons, right? I've only learned about how to be a better person, which works for me according to my values, which to you are very different, to me are very different, and that's the way life works. Uh, we're brought up according to familial circumstances. We're a product of all of our experiences, right? This is going to be one of those experiences. And do you kind of hope for that too, like I do? There, you know, We can set some kind of example for individuals to be able to say, hey, listen, we can get through really hard conversations. And we can still laugh, high five, and go for dinner after. Absolutely. And I'll I'll add to that something that I really hope for from this is that it will make other people have those conversations mm -hmm. and start to say, okay, I'll give an example. Uh, after 9-11, I was really anti-Muslim. And I really didn't like Islam. And I thought it was a horrible thing. And that was kind of like, it was a bias. Let's call it a prejudice, right? Based on mm -hmm. propaganda, frankly based on mostly American, but it was in Canada too, propaganda. And I had a girlfriend uh, at the at the time of many years after it. So it was probably a decade after 9-11. And she said, look, why do you have this in you? Like, I have this really good Muslim friend. You should start going for breakfast with him and talking to him. And he has become a lifelong friend. We love talking wow. theology together. Now I have tons of Muslim friends. And all it took was sitting down with someone and actually hearing why they believe what they believe. Like, do I think that Christians Amazing. have done a lot of horrible things throughout history? Yep. Do I think Muslims have done a lot of horrible things throughout history? Yep. Do I think humans are capable of horrible things? 100%. But the thing is, it's hard to think horrible things about a person you know. Mm. And if my people get to know Dean, maybe they'll stop sending death threats. And if your people get to know me, maybe they're going to realize this isn't some, this isn't what the media has painted him to be. The media has done, and they think they've done a wonderful job of, of telling people who I am. Really all they've done is bring more attention to me and help get my message out. But, but the <laughs> truth of the matter is that used to be how it was. If the media painted you in a certain light, it was impossible to tell people you were different. It's just nobody trusts the media anymore. You know, and I, I, I'll sidle into that, you know, in terms of media reputation. So I was canceled several years ago for being a radio host. And my radio station hired a company called Navigator at the time. A gentleman from Canada Proud named Jeff Balling all worked there recently sued me. We're going to go to court together. It's going to be a lot of fun. And it was a paid operation by my company at the time to put articles in certain newspapers to curate a reputation as me being this anti-gay, not woke or progressive. Keep, keep in mind, I was painted as a virulent homophobe, right? Virulent homophobe because my producer was on a jury trial where a gay man raped four other gay men over the course of a weekend. Everybody was on MDMA and he talked about it. He was on the jury for it. So, and we talked, all we did was talk about it. And I'm like, eh, I guess you sentenced a guy to five of the greatest years of his life. Good for him. Cause that's, I'm a big street justice guy had nothing to do 
with homophobia, had nothing to do. I was a huge proponent, huge advocate for the gay community, always have been, had gay co-hosts, lesbian co-hosts, absolutely loved them as individuals. We all took part in all those jokes. Sea change. I'm like patient zero for cancellation in Canada in 2014, right? The media did that. They got paid to do it. Paid to do it. And when David says you can't trust mainstream media, hi, right here. I'm patient zero in this country for that. So I have a personal, not vendetta, I've got a personal attachment to what he's saying because I was in the machine, I saw it, and I was a victim of it, a proud victim of it because of what I've learned. And what that made me do, to David's point, was go and talk to people like you talk to Muslim people. I spent two years saying, where did I go wrong? Explain this to me. And you know what it came down to? Mm -hmm. You cannot use marginalized groups as a footnote for a joke ever. I thought I was entitled to that. You're not. I'm not. And then it came down to my own personal ideology, which is now... I believe I'm here and I put everything through one filter, which is to be of good character, do acts for the common good. If I'm going to hurt somebody's feelings, that is not acts for the common good. That is not good character. So that content does not live in my space. But I am still, according to, depending on the hillbilly from the right or the nutbag on the left, I'm still a homophobe because they can go and grab those receipts. (laughs) Right. You know what I mean? And put them in your face. It gets brought up to me at least once a month. Right. About, you know. Somebody wanting to highlight my relationship the with Dean. Like, mm, are you yeah. sure? Yeah. yeah. I'm like, ah, you're there, not and, sure. And, and I think the, you better the, go the back and take another look. The most amazing part is like within a, on my timeline, within a span of like two minutes, I'll get like a Toronto Star article from 2014 going, see, you hate gay people. And then, then I'll get someone like from the right. And then I'll get someone from the left go, you're just supporting yeah. fascism because you had David Parker on. You're a fascist. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, can you fucking yeah. people make up your mind? So we live in this world where everybody's allowed to curate your reputation, where everybody's allowed to tell you what you think and tell you how evil you are, tell you the boogeyman, tell you that you can't hang out with these people, tell you that your your ideas are stupid, tell you how you got there, tell you, in David's case, homeschool jokes all you like. You know, oh, yeah, you, they love they love the homeschool jokes. Oh, yeah, as yeah. if as if the modern education system is producing highly intelligent people. But that's another <laughs> question altogether, I suppose. Well, that's, so, that's another so episode I, of our podcast yeah. series. However, oh, however, that is why we're here, because I'm like, you know, fuck the norms, fuck tradition, fuck for, fuck everybody else's second and third principles. Let's go first. Let's have these conversations. And that is exactly what my podcast series with David Parker called Head On will be. And I am unafraid because I do not care. So there you go. Okay. I, I have a question for you both again. Okay, I do um, have to now, leave here talked about- shortly, but uh, let's go. <laughs> okay. We, we'll let you go here. Just um, ask him this one question. Echo Chambers. Just go one question. Yeah, one question and we can move on. So now we've kind of we've established that there might be a cage over a lot of these groups and and they don't let anybody else into that cage. Um, so now you guys are trying to open up the door to that cage and let people in and you're going to have a discussion. What are the what do you do you guys perceive any potential struggles with this this relationship you're trying to curate? Like right, no. and I? Yeah. No, no. We'll just no. tell people to shut okay. the fuck up and get in line. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I literally spend most of uh, the last two years getting on stage and telling everyone that the reason that they were in the position they were was that it was their fault because they weren't taking responsibility for their own society. And and, okay. uh, and that's what Take Back Alberta is, is take it back from your own apathy. You You don't like how things are going. You better get involved. You better start showing up. And that's worked. And the success of it is not even questioned by my enemies like Charles Adler. But um, <laughs> but but the truth, and I think this is really important, is they can't cancel me. I'm already canceled. They can't cancel Dean. He's already canceled. So the only the only thing we have left to do is break the system. That's why I'm here. <laughs> That's We're why both I'm here, here to break the system. I like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I I like it, guys. Yeah. You, you, I really like it. I I'm a fan. I'm I'm a I'm a huge fan. I don't agree with either of you, <laughs> and, I, and I'll be tuning in. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> That's great. You're our, you're as long patient. as you're tuning in, that's what we're looking for. Uh, <laughs> I think you're both. David, uh, uh, email. Sorry, your Twitter is uh, David Parker. No, what is David it? David JPBA. Uh, David I made, JPBA. I made it in 2000. 
11 or something. I don't remember when it doesn't I matter. It. I love people making excuses for their Twitter handles. I don't know why I was proud of having a bachelor's degree at the time, but I was. So, you know, I threw it in there <laughs> from like a, an educational institute. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, some people might say Trinity Western's just the glorified Bible college. Who knows? I, I thought it was fun. I enjoyed my time there. I don't believe in, uh, in academia, but we can have a whole conversation about that. Oh, too. I can't wait for that one. Oh, be be a lot of fun. This, there's another yeah, topic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Drop that one that down. One. Uh, I, will, that, anyway, <laughs> I would love to have that debate. That will be a fun debate. <laughs> uh, get a hold of David on Twitter, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, David Parker, director of Take Back Alberta, the podcast series will be called Head On, featuring myself and David, and we're bringing friends. And it will be this year, and we are busy working on formats, busy working on topics, busy working on guests, and we're going to have conversations that no one says we're allowed to have. Uh, that's why we want to do them. Dave, great to see you. I know you're busy. We'll uh, talk to you soon. Really glad you got to meet Lachlan today, too. You guys yeah, nice together. to meet you, Lachlan. I really enjoyed that. When I'm up yeah, in Edmonton, David, we'll I, go uh, for a uh, steak or something. Yeah, no, all over. Give me a call. Please do. I um, and, and I appreciate your time today. I... um. I am one of the many that had you in a box in a cage and um, I, I, and I was willing because of where I'm at in my personal development, um, willing to have a conversation with you because I've, I've pushed Dean to do that. Like we gotta, we gotta push ourselves to have these awkward, uncomfortable conversations with people that don't agree with us or that we don't agree with. And so I had you in a box. I am 100% uh, guilty of that, and you are now out of the box. Well, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> okay, I got to go, guys. Yeah, yeah. Talk to thank you soon. Thank you. All Get right. out of here, David. David Parker, take care. ladies and gentlemen, take back Alberta. There you go. What do you think? You okay now? Yeah, no, I, I, I'm, I'm very hopeful for, for, that, for that series that you're starting with him. I think it's going to be unbelievable. I'm going to bring something up. My son. Hey, buddy. Good to see you. My boy is here. Um, I'll bring something up, and I want to. I want to put this on screen, <clears throat> okay? Because a lot of people are going to look at me, and I, I don't care. I'm not justifying shit to anybody. Uh, but a lot of people are kind of look at me after they listen to this, watch this podcast, and they're going to go, "What are you doing? Mm -hmm. Let me show you what I'm doing." Okay? It's really easy to sit with everybody else in the stands and launch your fruits and vegetables and say, boo, boo. It's really hard to keep your nerve and have a conversation. It's really hard to go into that arena and go, okay, I'm ready. Let's talk. Let's do this. Let's act on behalf of people. Back in 2011, do you remember Shirley Phelps Roper from the organization God Hates, pardon my language exclusively, GodHatesFags.com. Remember that? I, I remember Westboro the story. Baptist I Church. do. Remember that? It was an international story. Yeah. Um, right. If you remember back in the day, they would go and protest funerals, any funeral, funeral of a soldier, and they would yeah. use it as a way to tell people they're going to hell because gay people are allowed to get married in the United States. Just absolute cretinous shitholes. I used to put them on my radio show all the time just for the insanity. So... There was a shooting in Arizona where Gabby Gifford, who at the time was a senator, got shot in the head. Remember that? And it yeah. was at a strip mall during an appearance. And a little girl was shot in the head as well, and she died. And Shirley Phelps Roper puts out an announcement. She's like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go to that little girl's funeral. We're going to protest. We're going to protest that little girl's funeral. She deserved to die because God is punishing America for allowing same-sex marriages. This is in 2011. This is allegedly homophobic Dean in 2011. So I phoned Shirley Phelps Roper and I, I made her a deal. I said, listen, if I give you 10, 15 minutes on the radio station in the morning here in Toronto, Canada, to do your political rhetoric. None of my listeners are going to give a shit about anything you say because they're smart enough. Will you not go to the funeral? Will you, will you not go? Will you promise me you won't go to that little girl's funeral? She said yes, and she was true to her word. She did not put her on the air for 15 minutes. I was excoriated by Canadian media. Can't believe you platformed all that hatred. Can't believe you allowed her to talk. I'm like, I don't give a fuck about you. I don't care about you. I don't care about anybody else who's offended by this. I care about that little girl's family being allowed to mourn her death in peace. That's what I care about. And so that's what we did. This is in 2011. I never talk about this kind of stuff. I received letters, emails, 
from congressmen, senators, people from around the United States, the Giffords family, little girl's family, thanking me for this. Never talked about it once. And there are a couple of news articles, and I'm going to bring your attention to them. This was from The Atlantic. This is 2011, uh, where they said Canada saves Tucson funeral from protesters. And you can read all about it. Um, and you can read what we did. Uh, problem gets right to the heart of the Canadian experiment where the line between public good and individual liberty. So perhaps it's fitting that when a solution came for this person's funeral, it didn't come with Arizona or from within Americans, America's borders, but from our brethren to the north. Members of the Canadian, of the radical uh, Kansas church canceled plans to pick at the funeral of a nine-year-old girl after being promised a live interview on a Toronto radio station. Dean Blundell, a controversial morning show host, Rock Radio Station 102.1 The Edge said he brokered the deal with Shirley Phelps Roper of the Westboro Baptist Church in an effort to prevent further suffering of the victim's family. I said, I'll give you, say whatever you want, spew whatever religious rhetoric you like. You can talk about how terrific it is in our morning show if you agree not to protest the funeral. She agreed. Uh, this person said, Toronto Radio host Dean Blundell, America salutes you. America salutes you. Three years later. I knew the story. I didn't know your involvement yeah, with it. Three years later. Good for you. Three years later, I was fired for being homophobic. Okay. Three years later. None of that matters. What matters is when people ask me why I talk to other people like David Parker, anybody else who you might not like, who might be on, the, uh, on this, this side of some equation you find so offensive. Why do you know those people? Why do you talk to those people? That's why. You cannot affect change throwing fruit from the stands. You only affect change from being in the arena. So get into the arena. And if you're one of those people who thinks it's cool to sit there and tweet with your thumbs about how awful everybody else is and how you're the light of this world, you're lost. You, you are going to become roadkill in the conversation that everybody's going to start having. Conflict conversations. Don Lemon, Elon Musk did it. Tucker Carlson, Chris, Chris Cuomo did it. These are big swingers. We're just little people having these conversations. But at least we're going to talk. So there you go. Head on. David Parker, Dean Blundell coming to a podcast series near you with all of our friends that he has in tow. Maybe a Tucker Carlson. Maybe a Jordan Peterson. Maybe some people from my side of the equation as well. We'll see what happens. But I'm excited for the series. Uh, we have signed the agreement. It is a done deal. It is a document, and we are going to be doing these podcasts, and you're going to be part of it as well. So I'm excited. I think we're, as a society, we're pretty good at forgiving ourselves for the things that we do or the mistakes that we make. I think that next step in the equation to, um, to get better, yeah. all of us, is to start finding ways to, you know, forgive others, mm -hmm. right? And not only that, and I, I think what you and David are doing is is noteworthy on 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 the perspective of, all right, I'm gonna give me myself a chance to hear Dean's story. I don't agree with him, but I want to hear Dean's story. I want to hear why he is where he is. What informs him? Why did he get to the point he is right now today? Right, and we can do that with with people we don't agree with. We can. We can do that. If we can do that with ourselves, we can do that with, with others. Mm -hmm. right? Well, we'd like to think we could, right? You know, it's, it's we one don't. thing to like, it takes yeah, work. But it's one thing to think you're right. Right. We got a bunch of people running around with Dunning Kruger, people going, ah, I know this part about my corner and that's what I'm going to use to bludgeon everybody with, you know, and no one talks. Everybody's sad. It's, it's tough, Dean. It's tough to get out yeah. of that. Out of that echo chamber, it's tough to open Dude, up. Dude, I've been in it for like three that, years. That you said something earlier. You asked yeah. a question about silos and getting out of our silos. I've been in a silo for three years. Uh, I think a lot of us have, and we all have. Uh, yeah. I have started to branch out and talk, and it's not like I've compromised my values. I am fucking stead, fast, courage, wisdom, temperance, justice. I will absolutely spend my last breath and dime standing up for people who deserve me to to manage my risk to give them my privilege to give them whatever it is i can to help the marginalized i will do all of those things but i'm also entitled to these conversations everybody is 
So let's start having them. Appreciate you doing this, Locke. Thanks, buddy. And if anybody ever questions my relationship with Dean, it, it, it was that right there. That's why. That's why we're friends. Well, and uh, if anybody questions my relationship with you, I've been trying to get you to do these interviews for the past two, three years. Really glad you. <laughs> Such a call. I don't know why you were so pig headed about it. In all seriousness, <laughs> Lachlan has been saying this for two years. It's just not loud enough. Me! Just not loud Me. enough. Uh, time for the locker room retro replay of the day brought to you by our friends at Ardent Roof Systems. Go to ardentroofsystems.com in the greater uh, Edmonton area. If you're in Alberta, my friend Stacy Disatel might be the coolest guy on the planet. One of he's the, oh, he's he's the number one guy. Owens Corning uh, Platinum Partner in North America as of this year. Just just got just an award and trophy. Um, so we'll get yeah. to the golf tournament in a minute because I want everybody to go get a quote from me. If you need eaves, if you need siding, if you need roofing. There's my man. That's Lachlan's man. He's been Lachlan's buddy for years. He would never send anybody else to do anybody's roof, Lachlan. I know that to be true. And they're a partner of the retro locker room retro replay of the day today, correct? I would like you to meet George, the locker room, locker room retro, retro replay. replay. Hi, it's George. You're listening to the locker room on 95.7 Cruise FM. We'll run it. We'll run it. Okay, have a nice day. Are you on a smoke break? Well, yeah, I'm trying to light my smoke as we speak. <laughs> what do you smoke? Huh? What kind? Of, what, what brand? Right now, it's like, no, no, I'm not telling you, because then Players they'll be out for where sure. I go to buy them. <laughs> they're cheaper smokes, and like I go there now, now sometimes they're out of them. Before, they were never out of them. I go, hey, can I get these? Oh, we don't have any. Oh, I smoke a cheaper brand. Not, George, I have bought some. George. George, we have, <laughs> we have to go. <laughs> it's White Wolf oh, Wednesday. White Wolf, right on. So we're going to use the White Wolf songs. White Wolf. Well, look, lady, look them George, up on the internet. at some point, no. you're going to have to let the radio guy talk. <laughs> okay, okay, sorry. I'm going to use those songs for our bed, our music bed for our weathers. Oh, man. Hey, I'm trying to take you're back getting emotional. that. Well, wait, don't you guys got to get permission from them? Permission from ah. White Wolf? <laughs> uh, well, hey, yeah, you know, we'll call but, them. No. Okay, okay, no problem. George, we're going to let you go. You go in and deal hey, with your dick nice doctor. Okay, okay. Have a nice day. Bye. All right, bye. Holy <laughs> You know, I, mean, I can be sarcastic and just like you. Yeah. I yeah, think that's yeah. why we have this connection. <laughs> Are you a member of Wexit? Wexit. Okay. I don't own a Lexus. I own a Jeep. What's this about ear candling? Okay, uh, I heard about that stuff a long time, uh, a time ago, but I, I asked the doctor, he said, don't. Okay, when I was younger, okay, remember, now I'm from Portugal, my mother. From a village. Like some, oh, we, we lived in a village. We didn't have police. A nurse would come by once a week. And stuff like that, right? <laughs> and, okay, uh, what she used to do was she get some milk and she would bring it to a boil, right? And then stop it and then take a Q-tip and then put it down my ear. I, holy f***. <laughs> and then that was like, Listen. God, I, oh, I think it f***ed up my ear even more. Yeah, you know, ask a doctor first. Ask a couple. No, because I've, probably, been, I've, been, I've been ear candling for years, and I'm fine. Are you? You have massive ear problems. I have an issue you right had now that I'm dealing with cotton for the last month. Good morning, Cruz. Good morning, sir. How are you today? Good. How was your weekend, George? That was the wall. I worked. George, can I ask you a, a serious question? Well, okay. Well, go ahead. We've joked about this, but... I actually think there might be some truth to it. Did you sell drugs in the 80s? I once. <laughs> Can I interrupt you? Because okay. the line is ringing, and it might okay. be him, because we yeah. were having trouble, so... Or it's George. Or it's... I hope it's not George again. <laughs> Hang on one second. Okay. Yeah, no. Deepak, is that you? Deepak? Oh, <laughs> We're, George. we're doing an interview we're right in the now, middle George, of an interview, so. George. Oh, sorry. Up. Okay, okay. I just want. Do you want me to leave then? Yeah. Yes. We'll, we'll text okay, you bye, later. Okay. Bye. Bye. Uh, 
Oh my God, that was George again. <laughs> oh my God. Maybe George is really interested in our yoga class. Uh, uh, I will do you a favor and everybody else at Master Lab and not send him down. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Unless he can smoke in class now. <laughs> Ah, uh, uh, found humor. I love George, dude. I I think it's awesome that your locker room retro replay of the day. George passed yeah, away. Featuring a lot of people who died in the last three years. George, <laughs> <laughs> we lost George uh, George, February uh, twenty twenty three. It's like a fucking memorial every day with this. <laughs> I told you that we were going to introduce all the crazy characters from the locker room this week. <laughs> I got I get jealous when I listen to you talk to George or who's on the other day, Mad Mike Hughes. Because yeah. if you have done radio and you know that you get a listener that calls in who's off his rocker, that is easily the most Gold. magic radio will ever, has ever, or will continue to ever be when you get some guy who real calls person. in who's a real individual who doesn't know he's that funny, but the way he is is so outrageously awesome. You cannot repeat it. You cannot engineer it. It's you just what it, it is, right? Yeah. Yeah. Fucking awesome, dude. You know, it, it, we went to the funeral. The, the family loved us, loved the show. Like we had every Portuguese um, person in Edmonton and probably in Canada listening to us because of George. He was very, he was beloved in his community and, um, and George, when he passed away, his brother's son, who was a big fan of the show, uh, called and said, if you guys can make the funeral, that would be amazing. So we kind of snuck in and sat at the back and we wanted to pay our respects. I, I, we didn't want to make it about us because George had passed away. So we were, and then when we, when, when the, when the ceremony was over and we were outside, we got flooded by this, this family, this, this massive Portuguese family that just loved George. And they were so, and it was so heartwarming because he was just a character on our show. Mm -hmm. Right. But what we did for him and, 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 uh, and his, his, his life and, we kind of, we gave him something fun and I didn't, I didn't, ex we didn't appreciate that until we met everybody in his life. Mm. They were thank, like they were th thanking us for putting this guy who was just an incredible character on the radio. They were so grateful. It was such a, such a good experience. I'm so glad that we took the time to go to the funeral and spend a day there with, uh, with his family. You know, and, 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 and yeah, you don't, I know you do. And not many people in this industry have those relationships. Like you look at. You know, people like that as assets, right? Well, it's just free content, but you mean it. Like you're one of the very few people that I know that has that human perspective where it's taken me yeah. to, like stuff like that, that funeral to realize the impact, mm. right? And 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 actually getting fired was a huge getting let go, whatever the hell they want to call shit it. canned. Get, like yeah. shit canned. Uh, that has been a Greased. huge eye opener. COVID. I remember we were so like isolated from everybody yeah. and we were going to work and then in about six months in we started getting notes dean um I, thank you for doing what you're doing i like like it, people were so grateful for the three of us just being three idiots on the radio because their lives were so much more complicated than they used to be yeah. right this podcast you've yeah. seen it i mean i i've had multiple people, multiple people reach out to me over the years of me being involved with this, thanking me for doing, I'm like, wow, that's crazy. We, we just get on here and we just, we tell stupid stories and, you know, and have some fun and you don't realize the impact you're having on other people. No, you lives. don't. Um, you know, and, 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 and we'll end there. We'll end on that note is that, you know, there are a lot of reasons why we do this, right? There are a lot of reasons why we're yeah. in radio and some of them good, some of them not great. Um, but the gift that that business gave people like you and me is perspective. You know, it's friendships, it's relationships, yeah. it's appreciation. You know, and you you spend some time out of radio and you realize back when you could connect with people on the radio, no one listens anymore, so it doesn't matter. But you realize mm, they don't, dude. That's why you're not there anymore. <laughs> They're ruining it. They're, they, the gatekeepers are yeah. killing it. They're but, killing it. 
we do this or you have these conversations. This is real. That is not right. And so, but the, the whole point is, is that, you know, it changes us, right? The, that business. And it's the people that you talk to. It's the guys you work with. It's those experiences where you look out uh, of your silo, you get out of the studio, you go to a, a funeral someone who loved you and his whole family says to you, you wouldn't believe the light you were in that man's life and how you changed him and how you made everybody happy around him because he felt like he belonged to something. And he had this incredible experience that you gave him. Right. And that's what radio is. I'm always shocked. So get people that come up to me and it's like, it sucks sometimes. Right. Cause they're like, my dad and I used to listen to you all the time. Okay. Like 40. I'm like, Oh, <laughs> My mom loves you. <laughs> you were a big part of our lives back in the day. You got me through high school. You got me through 9-11. You got me through COVID. Whatever those situations are, we're just doing these things. And when it means something to somebody, that's the stuff. Nothing else, right? So good job. I like George. Yeah. Oh, George, you would have loved George. I love Such him now. Guy. All right, man. Talk to you tomorrow. I look forward to those David Parker interviews, man. Those are going to be those are yeah, going to be solid. starting late spring, uh, early summer launch date, and we're going to have some humdingers. So it'll be good. Appreciate it, dude. We'll talk to you soon. Lock and Cross at Lock and Cross on Twitter is where you can find him. Uh, there it is in his uh, Chiron. You can see it at the bottom. You can get everything you do as a locker room merch page uh, and the locker room YouTube page if you want to go and meet George and a bunch of people that used to be on his radio show. Uh, as he pays tribute now that he's moving into digital media, just kind of bringing people with him, introducing us to what he used to do for a living. I think it's awesome. Uh, so check it out. Locker Room uh, YouTube page. You can also check out everything we do on our YouTube pages. We've got one, Dean Blundell Show, another one called Cryer Media. Uh, that's where you can get all of these podcasts. You can also find us at Cryer Media, Cryer.co. That is our home. Home away from home. It's going to be a lot of people's home very soon. Anyway. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Thanks, David, for being part of the show. Uh, heads up for that podcast series called um, Head On. Really creative shit. I didn't name it. Our business development guy did. Like, All right. Sounds great. Anyway, uh, appreciate everybody spending some time with us today. Thank you. Really appreciate you guys being with us. And I also appreciate our partners. Uh, like the group of Cantor, Colin Livingston and his crew out of Edmonton, Alberta, have been making rugged, hardworking torque wrenches for heavy industry around the world for 20 years. All your solutions under one roof. Go to Cantorque.com today for more information. Check out their products, services, news, their podcast, Talking Torque. Colin's one of the best, and he does an impossible job. He finds solutions for bolting solutions with there are no solutions. That's what he does. Bolting needs, saving you time, effort, and hassle. It uh, doesn't matter. They can tour a complete range of services, products, making them your one-stop destination. In most cases, they've been there and done that. Uh, they have the highest quality products designed to withstand the most demanding conditions. Torque wrenches, the best in the world. And they've been doing it from Canada for over 20 years, providing you with comprehensive solutions tailored to your specific requirements in heavy industry, machinery, railroad, nuclear. doesn't matter if you've got a loosening or fastening solution. They're just called bolting solutions. And you need a torque wrench that operates at a, a Herculean level that they don't make. This is your guy. Put some maple leaf on everything. Go and check him out. Uh, oil sands. That's why he's in Alberta preferred method of torque wrenching anything that's can torque this guy's awesome does it for industry around the world out of canada so give him a call uh and hit him up on his new website it's an awesome new website called cantorque.com check him out today also brought to you by rome auto rome.auto the car subscription company that's going to end how people buy cars it's changing the economy of car buying if you go to rome.auto today and sign up all you got to do is sign up with promo code rome with dean R-O-A-M-W-I-T-H-D-E-A-N. That's me. You're going to get $150 off your first month's payment. Now, here's the point of difference, right? You, we've been sold cars the same way for years and years and years, and you get hosed generally. As soon as you drive that car off the lot, it's worth 20, 30 grand less. Uh, you don't know where you're getting in a used car. And you want to mitigate any risk or loss from that risk when you buy a car. Super easy to do. That's why Rome exists. Brand new to the greater Toronto area. If you're in Toronto and you need a car for a month, three months, six months, one year, and you don't want to pay for insurance. You don't want to pay for routine maintenance. You don't want to pay for roadside assistance, but you want it all included. And you don't want to have to rent a car for three to four grand a month from a car rental company. This car subscription company, Rome, will change the game. Rome.auto. Browse cars today. 
no lease or interest payments, pay as you go, flexible monthly plans, plans starting in a month, going to a year, home delivery and valet service available, all endorsed by Blog TO, Yahoo Finance, Benzinga, of course, CBC did a huge article on the other day, 4.9 stars out of Google. Everybody loves this service. It's the fastest way for you to get into a car. It's the easiest, most cost-effective way for you to get a new car, Rome.auto, Rome with Dean. That is your promo code, 150 off your first month. Tell them I said hi. And, of course, brought to you by our friends at Muse Massage Spa. Our friends, Emily and Riley, have the ability to educate you in the world of sexology like nobody else because they own Muse Massage Spa. Go to musemassagespa.com. Their new podcast is out. They're on episode 30. You can get it on Patreon. Subscribe to that. It's totally uncensored. The uh, minorly censored version on YouTube, Muse on the Mic YouTube. Please go and subscribe to their podcast. But more importantly, get in touch with Emily and Riley on their website. You can go and contact them at Muse Massage Spa. Tell them Dean Blundell said you're going to get a great experience. They're going to give you $50 off and make it as discreet as possible or any first-time users. And not only that, they're going to walk you through it. They've got an incredible store. They've got a brand new website, musemassagespa.com. They're located at 20, 1290 Finch Avenue West. And these girls do all of it. Not only are they entrepreneurs, not only are they socially uh, responsible. These women advocate for other people in the sex work industry like nobody else in the world. And their podcast is all about it. Patreon, Muse on the Mic. YouTube, Muse on the Mic as well. And again, don't forget to go to musemassagespa.com today to book your treatment. And factcheck.io. Our title partner, factcheck.io, is incredible. The world's been looking for a disinformation solution for a very long time. We've seen it happen over the past several years. I also was involved in a lawsuit that brought this whole thing around. Uh, when Canada Proud sued us, we wanted to get busy responding properly. So we teamed up with a group of scientists, journalists, several months ago, uh, data scientists, computer scientists, lawyers, and we wanted the most complete end-to-end -end solution for disinformation to put that in the hands of people who are surfing the internet on a daily basis, being inundated with lies, disinformation, misinformation. We want a tiebreaker. We don't want to cause arguments with human beings. We said, hey, listen, if we've got AI machine learning and the ability to keep people up to date and tell them that what they just read is a lie or the truth, why would we not do that? That exists. And then we built it. And then we found out through the prototype, which I have tested the beta test, we found out through the prototype that the reason why these don't exist is because they get purchased by uh, <laughs> social media companies so they can continue to keep information in that gray area. We want to give you full agency over misinformation and disinformation. And our friends at factcheck.io have done that. It is unbelievable software. The beta test will blow your mind. Any picture, any video, any text, any URL, uh, even events in real time like a Shazam service. This is an incredible opportunity for you to get involved in their beta test program today. You go to factcheck.io. You can sign up, get involved in the beta test, try and break their software. Uh, it is one of the most incredible advancements in machine learning, AI, and creativity when it comes to being able to give you the opportunity to feel confident that what you read is truth or not, inorganic or organic. This is the future. Go to factcheck.io and sign up for their beta test today. Factcheck.io, F-A-K-T-C-H-E-K.io. Do you believe? That's it for us. Have a great day, everybody. Appreciate it. Uh, don't forget, you can get everything we do at Cryer Media. Go to Cryer.co for more details today. Rate, subscribe, or podcast. That'd be awesome. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. We got uh, massive damage from Monster Pro Wrestling on tomorrow. Have a great day. We'll see you then. Bye. Opinions expressed by guests on the show are their own and do not reflect the views of the creators, hosts, or that of Cryer Media or their partners. The show may cover sensitive topics and information and discuss triggering issues. Listener discretion is advised.